Hello, everyone. My name is Emma Shi, the director of International Piano Professional Association Canada Division. Today, I'm thrilled to invite my mentor, idol, supervisor, Dr. Janet Lopinski, to give us a presentation. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm delighted to be here with you today. Um, I am, as, as, as Emma mentioned, the um, Senior Director of the College of Examiners and Academic Programs at the RCM. The Royal Conservatory has been a part of my, important part of my life um, for as long as I can remember. I've gone through the program as a student, as a young teacher, as a parent, as an examiner, and now in my role um, as, as the person who oversees the work of the College of Examiners and Director of, of Academic Programs. And I'm delighted to have this opportunity today to share my experience and introduce the program to some of you who um, may not be familiar with it yet. So in today's session, um, we'll briefly explore the RCM mission, and then we'll do an introduction to the certificate program, including an overview of the curriculum, supporting resources, the examinations, and then we'll have a look at the Piano Syllabus 2022 edition and the Celebration Series 6th edition, as well as the examination experience, and I'll be sure to leave some time for your questions. So as, as you may know, the mission of the Royal Conservatory is to develop human potential through providing leadership in music and the arts. Simply put, we believe that the arts are humanity's greatest means to achieve personal growth and social co cohesion and that the world is a better place because of music and the arts. And I know that as music teachers, um, you all experience this as I do in your work every day. We're able to see firsthand how involvement in music and music study can change our students' lives for the better, as well as the lives of their families and the communities in which they live. So thank you for all the work that you do in service of this mission and um, in supporting your students as they come to know themselves better through studying music. So the RCM has a long history of success. Um, probably our most notable alumni are Oscar Peterson and Glenn Gould, but there are many other um, musicians who are important musical leaders in the world today. But more importantly, or equally as important, are the many people who, um, because of their experience studying music, have gone on to successful careers in many other fields, whether it be medicine or science or the law or politics or teaching or um, whatever else, athletes, um, journalists, and many of these successful individuals attribute the discipline and commitment that they learned and self-awareness and communication skills and collaboration skills that they learned through the study of music to their success in other fields. So all of this um, is very, very important in terms of the work that we do at the Royal Conservatory, and it informs everything that we do. In terms of the RCM certificate program, which we're focusing on today, this is, as you probably know, a comprehensive system of music study and assessment. Today, we're focusing on piano, but we do actually have our program available for 22 instruments, as well as voice and speech arts and drama. And in support of music studies, we also have our theory and history programs. The program spans from the elementary through to the advanced level, and the advanced level overlaps with um, post-secondary university study, even graduate study, in terms of the repertoire and the level of performance that's expected. A very large number of students in North America have studied the RCM curriculum over the years and um, annually continue to prepare for exams study using our syllabus or play music from our books. So we're very proud um, of the success of all of our students and graduates. If we break down how the certificate program works, it really consists of three main components. The comprehensive curriculum, which is outlined in the syllabi, the supporting resources, which now include both 
print resources as well as digital resources. And the third party assessment, which is conducted by members of the professional RCM College of Examiners. And this um, system allows students to measure their progress and celebrate their success. Now, some teachers and students use one component of the program without the other two or two components without the third. Um, but I think the greatest success comes when students and teachers follow the path of the curriculum fully engage with the supporting resources, both digital and print, and work towards those annual assessments in the form of examinations that allow students to do their best work to prepare towards a goal and also to track their progress. So the curriculum itself offers a well-rounded music education. And I think it's fair to say that it really is the gold standard for well-rounded music education because of the fact that all of the important areas of music study are covered. So in this diagram, we see at the top repertoire, and that's because most students come to music study because they want to learn to play an instrument and learn to play beautiful music so they can share it with their family and friends. But in order to do that, um, they can't just play music. They have to work, of course, at their technique, which allows them um, to express their musical ideas with ease and comfort. They work on their musicianship skills, their music literacy, and right at the bottom of this diagram, like the foundation, is the study of theory. That's very important in our program because we believe that um, music students learn music faster if they're aware of how it's constructed and they understand the building blocks of music. And also this allows independence moving forward once they no longer have teachers to help them learn their music. So all of these areas of study are integrated within our program and work together to support well-rounded musical development. As I mentioned, the curriculum is outlined in the RCM syllabi available for all of those instruments and voice and speech arts and drama, as well as our theory syllabus. The syllabi are all available online on our website. If you haven't yet visited our website, we invite you to do so, rcmusic.com. And you can get an idea of all the other things the Royal Conservatory does. But if you go to slash syllabi, you will see all of those syllabi listed there, as well as some supplements, some addendums that give additional information. And this is your roadmap to following the program. We'll be looking at the piano syllabus today. But first, I wanted to mention the practical examinations syllabus 2021 edition, which you should look for when you're preparing students um, for examinations. This takes all of the information about co-requisites, prerequisites, requirements, how the system works, all of the information that applies to all the disciplines and puts it in one place. So the elements that, that work across the board have now been taken out of the individual syllabi and combined together in this new document. But of course, we're most interested today in the Piano Syllabus 2022 edition, which is still quite new. It came out in April of this year. We update our syllabi every seven years. And we're very proud of this 2022 edition because of some of the wonderful music that's been included, reflecting the diversity and variety of music making in the world that we live in now. Um, some other exciting updates that I'll tell you about, but this is the current edition of the piano syllabus, and we will have a quick look to see how it is um, organized. So essentially, when you open the syllabus, you see this contents page, and this outlines how the syllabus is structured. Three main sections. The introduction, which gives you the overview of the program and how the requirements work. The level by level requirements, which is really the meat and potatoes of the syllabus. This is the part that most teachers use most often. Here's where you find out exactly um, which pieces are at which level, which scales are required, which ear tests are required. It's really the nitty gritty of the syllabus. And then the reference section, um, which includes information regarding marks, notated examples of all of the technical tests, examples of the musicianship tests, and a list of resources. 
So to get to know how this all works and how it's um, organized, let's take a peek into the level five inside the syllabus. And if, if you happen to have a hard copy syllabus uh, along, you can follow along. Or um, if you want to later on, you can go online and get your own um, digital copy immediately. So with level five, as with all of the other levels, the level begins with an overview page that um, is a very convenient resource for students and teachers because it shows at a glance what is involved. So for each level, we see a requirement summary chart, which shows you um, the repertoire lists, the technical requirements, the musicianship, and how the marks are allotted. Notice that out of 100 marks, 56 marks, um, so more than half, go for the performance of repertoire. That's because that's sort of at the core of our students' study. But a substantial number of marks is also allotted for technical requirements and musicianship. 10 marks for ear tests, 10 marks for sight reading. And that's to make sure that students don't um, neglect or ignore those other skills, but that they are rewarded for their work in those areas by receiving significant number of marks for them. So this chart um, evolves a little bit from level to level, but it's there at the start of every syllabus section for each new level. The next thing we see is the repertoire. And first, as a sort of one page summary, we see the repertoire that's actually contained in the celebration series. And we'll be talking about the celebration series in just a few minutes. The celebration series is our publication that um, provides the repertoire and etudes for each level. Um, so in the syllabus, there are pieces that aren't included in the books that are eligible for exams, but just for handy reference, in this new edition, we've listed all of the pieces and etudes that are contained within Celebration Series right at the start of that section. Next, we see um, the list of the technical requirements, including the etudes, which are in the etudes book, as well as the specific scales and patterns, keys and patterns that are required for that level. And then finally, there's a musicianship section, which outlines um, for that level the given ear tests and sight reading that are required. And after that, we see the complete list of repertoire, which includes all the pieces, all the pieces that can be played for level five or whichever level we're looking at that are not in the books. So that's the structure that continues throughout the whole syllabus. So um, let's just spend a moment zeroing in now on each element so you get an idea how each component is um, organized. I know that some of you might be using um, or might be familiar with other exam systems as well. So you can sort of compare how, how this works. Um, in our system, the technical tests um, it tests really two aspects of the development of technique. The familiarity with traditional patterns that pianists all over the world practice scales, chords, and arpeggios um, with a specific number of keys for each level. And the keys are introduced following the circle of fifths. And then also um, the fluency and ease in playing these patterns. Just typing something in here to make that go away. There we go. Um, the fluency and ease in playing these patterns, which is the actual physical development. So a student who understands how the patterns are formed has an easier time, of course, learning the requirements for each level. And that's where the relationship with studying theory comes in and becomes important. And then the fluency is the ability to uh, play smoothly with beautiful sound at the required minimum tempo, the patterns for each grade. Here's the chart that shows how the keys are introduced. As I mentioned, they do follow the circle of fifths with um, progressively larger number of sharps and flats in the key signatures introduced as we go through it. Notice that at the elementary levels, one to four, the major keys are pair, paired with their relative minor. So D major goes with B minor, um, B flat major goes with G minor. But from level five on, they're paired with their parallel minors. So now we're, we're um, coming to understand the relationships in a different way. That's a nice, um, a nice opportunity for students to enrich their understanding of how fingering patterns and also key relationships work. And here's just a sample of 
of what happens at any given level within the syllabus, the chart um, shows the patterns, two octave scales, formula pattern scales, chromatic scales, tonic triads. It lists the keys that are required, the number of octaves, the required minimum tempo and the note values. So all of that is available in the chart. Um, so you know, if any of you have been already using our program, the 2022 syllabus technical requirements are the same as in 2015. There were no changes in 2022 because we had a major revision in 2015, which seems to be working well. So we did not change the requirements, which means that if you have this technical requirements for piano 2015 edition book, it is still going to be um, valid and working for the current syllabus. I should mention that these technical requirements books write out all of the required patterns for that level, which can be a nice resource, but they also include some practice tips, some keyboard theory activities that give some ideas of how to link the technical requirements, the performance of the scales and the chords and the arpeggios with understanding of how those patterns are formed, as well as looking ahead in each book, we do a little preview of what will happen at the next level. So our ambitious, hardworking students can be planning ahead and starting in already to work for the next level. Um, and then, of course, the etudes, there is um, one etude required in level one and two, two etudes beginning with level three all the way through to um, level 10. And in our etude collections, we include a combination of traditional etudes by composers like Czerny and Bertini and um, Bergmuller with also some contemporary pieces that present the opportunity to refine certain techniques or to deal with certain musical or technical patterns in a focused way. So the etudes um, have that benefit that some of them can also be concert pieces that our students will enjoy learning and, and practicing, not just to develop technical skills, but as, as, as musical selections. This is the overview of how the repertoire is broken down. From the very beginning, there is a focus on ensuring that students are becoming familiar with music from a variety of styles and periods and genres. So um, even at level one and two, students are required to play one piece from the Baroque or classical repertoire and one romantic or 20th or 21st century piece and one invention. This is an important feature of our requirements that in level one and two, students are um, required to play a piece that gives the opportunity to develop equality between the hands and to develop independence of the hands, which of course will serve them well as they play their Baroque repertoire, moving up into the intermediate and advanced levels. And notice that from three pieces in level one through seven, we expand to four repertoire selections in level eight and nine, and then five repertoire selections in level 10. So the repertoire itself, um, though the repertoire in the celebration series and the syllabus offers um, an incredible amount of variety for teachers and students, should you happen to have a favorite piece that is not in our syllabus, we do have the opportunity to do teacher's choice substitutions on our examinations where a piece of similar length, difficulty, and musical quality can be substituted. We also have popular selection list substitutions and all of those um, available popular selection recommendations are in the popular selection list, which is a syllabus available on the website together with all the other syllabi. And a student may also do a syllabus substitution from the next highest level. So if you have a student who's preparing for level three, but has also already started working on some level four things, they may substitute one repertoire and one etude from the level above. We do require memorization of repertoire selections. At the preparatory through to level seven, um, two marks are awarded for each piece performed by memory. If a student does not memorize a piece, they, they lose two marks. Um, for level eight, as of this new syllabus, we are also awarding six marks, um, one and a half marks for each piece performed by memory. 
And from level nine and 10, there are no more bonus marks awarded for memory. Instead, there are deductions taken from the total marks earned for that piece if they perform it with music. And this is um, simply to recognize the importance of performing by memory. And we know that students who are still reading the music are often unable to really engage in expressing um, through music because they're still reading the music. So that is why we have this memory requirement to encourage more refined and polished performances, but um, to leave the door open for students who maybe have some challenges with memorizing to still be able to successfully complete their examination without memorizing. Up until the diploma level, at the diploma levels, the associate and the licentiate memorization is compulsory. And if students play with music, they do receive a mark of zero for that piece. So not a good idea to have students come to those diploma exams un unless their pieces are memorized. So um, the repertoire itself, I've mentioned the celebration series a few times now, and we're just going to have a, a quick look at it. Um, the covers, if you've had the previous editions, have been updated um, with this lovely artwork that is actually um, based on photographs of a historic piano, the Lady Eaton piano, which is um, in Dr. Peter Simon's office at the RCM on Bloor Street. The color coding matches the colors that we've had before. So if you have our theory books or our four star sight reading books, the same color um, is used for all the books of the various series for a given level. So if your student is in level five, they're buying books that are green. It makes it easier to organize for parents and teachers and students. The celebration series consists of 22 books, a total of 514 pieces by 222 composers, 79 of whom are living composers. We're very proud of all the new music that we've been able to include, new music um, coming from 20 different countries with 35 new pieces composed exclusively for the series. All of these pieces have been recorded. Um, they're beautiful recordings that were recorded in Kerner Hall at the RCM in Toronto with audio plus video. All of these are record recordings are available in our online teaching community. And um, at the back of each book that is purchased, there is there are instructions and a code um, for the students to know how to access students and teachers to know how to access um, those recordings. And I'm going to share a few of, of them with you today just um, so that you can sample how um, beautiful they are and get a taste of some of the new music. So let's do that now. Um, we're going to start with just a quick glimpse into the celebration series um, recordings. And I chose a piece that I thought maybe some of you may not know. It's a new piece to our series. It is from our Etude 7, and it's called Dancing Barefoot in the Rain. And it's performed here by Michael Burkowski. Um, this is not fun. So if you're not familiar with this composer in Keru Okoya, um, you can actually go online and find for her and any of the other composers, um, little brief composer biographies. And that can be a fun thing to introduce to your students by reading this biography. Um, we find out that um, this is a composer who was 
grew up in New York City, began composing at the age of 13, has written a number of pieces based on American history, including the story of Harriet Tubman, who escaped from slavery along the Underground Railroad. Um, so it's a great way for your students to engage um, in learning a little bit about the composers and their um, background. Speaking of learning about composers and their background, we're also very excited to have um, composer videos from many of the living composers whose music is featured in the celebration series, including all of them on this list. And they all made lovely little videos for us, including some inspiration and teaching tips um, for students and teachers. So let's just sample one of these. I thought you might enjoy seeing Dr. Randall Faber's video talking about the juggler, which is in the preparatory A album. <laughs> The juggler. So we're juggling C's here, aren't we? Our step one of the scale. And it builds in intensity because we have more repeated notes with each new juggling. So enjoy that and make sure you're in motion. In other words, I pop right off of this. It's heading down here. So I'm making these arcs. Stay in motion and then you'll be well prepared for the leap. Now, typically in our pieces, we've been Focusing on C as the home note and stepping up with our five finger scale to the G. Here we do just the opposite. We're going to start at the C, but we're going to step down to the G. So we have, but then we need to go back up, don't we? So it's the B and G and up and back down. How about this? Instead of juggling C's, do you think we could juggle the G's? Have some fun with that. Instead of being on the home note, maybe you want to juggle on that very dominant, very powerful number five tone and increase in intensity louder. So that's just a sample of the kinds of things that you can find um, in a series of videos that was created to support the celebration series. Great thing to share with your students at their lessons. And just a quick sample now, um, just a quick sample now um, of a few of the other new pieces that you might not know that are in Celebration Series and give you an, a, another opportunity to hear some of the wonderful recordings. So this is a morning fanfare, an etude that is in um, level six. And let's give, oh, sorry, no, this one is in level one. And we'll give this a quick listen now. A message just popped up. I thought I had blocked all my messages, but a message just popped up on my screen and distracted me a little bit. Here we go. Let's listen to this. So this is a charming alternative to uh, other five finger position um, etudes at this level. I think it has a lot of beautiful, um, fun character to it, but at the same time, it um, is a good opportunity to work still in that five finger position. Here's a, another etude um, now level six um, by jazz, jazz piece number two by Oscar Peterson, one of our um, very celebrated alumni. Very 
great. And we'll stop there. And in case you think all of the pieces um, have jazz influence, <laughs> I'll just end um, this brief selection of pieces from the Celebration Series um, by playing something a little more traditional that's also new to our series. Um, this is from re Repertoire Level 8, List D, The Spruce by Jean Sibelius, a beautiful expressive piece. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, so that's just a little sampling of um, what you'll find in the Celebration Series 6th edition. And if you are interested in um, a slightly deeper dive into the Celebration Series 6th edition, we do have a wonderful series of webinars that I'll tell you about at the end of our time together that are available on our website that you can look up. Um, and there's a webinar on each level or pairs of levels that gives you a, a really nice introduction to that repertoire as well as the other requirements. So quick look at the ear test requirements and sight reading requirements before we go on to a little bit about the examination experience itself. So in our system, really our ear tests um, are broken down into two main components or have been over the years, the identification of traditional musical elements like intervals, chords, and chord progressions, and the reproduction of musical passages, either through playing back melodies or clapping back rhythms. So we're testing musicianship skills from two um, different perspectives. And also these are all of the skills that we know our students need in order to be able to successfully memorize, improvise, um, create music, listen critically. In our new syllabus, we have offered now one new optional requirement, which I'm going to tell you about. And we're excited about this because it broadens the scope of the ear tests a little bit to not only be about playing back, clapping back, or identifying, but actually creating something new. Here's how the ear test marks are distributed um, amongst those various elements. They are marked out of 10 at each level, and there's a very specific breakdown that allows um, the marking to be very consistent for all these students and all the examiners. And here's a little bit about that new optional requirement. It starts from level five to 10, and instead of just playing back exactly what the examiner has played, the students have the opportunity now to play back um, a question phrase and also provide the answer phrase. So to provide a melodic improvisation that reflects a, a first a parallel period and then a contrasting period. Also with the sight reading, we have this new optional requirement where they can use a lead sheet. So I'll get to that in just a moment. Let's start with the melodic improvisation. Um, at levels five and six, when the examiner plays a four measure phrase, the student would answer with a four measure phrase to create a parallel period. In level seven and eight, they would answer with a four measure phrase to create a contrasting period. And let's look at an example of how this might work. At the back of the syllabus, you have a sample phrase for each level to give you an idea of the sort of phrase that would be played. And here's a little recording of a student trying this out. So you're going to hear that level five example played by the examiner three times. And then the student is supposed to play it back and also provide the answer phrase to go with this question phrase. All right, we're going to do your melody playback and you've chosen to do the improvised playback. So here's what we'll do. I'll play a four measure question You'll play that back and add an improvised four measure answer phrase. We're in G major and I'll play the melody three times.
great. Great. So she played um, the original melody back perfectly. Then she, to create the parallel period, she played back the opening of it, but she um, adjusted the ending so that instead of ending on an unstable pitch, it would end on a stable pitch and come back to the tonic. So um, well done. She would get four out of four for that response. Um, next. All right. Um, let's, we'll look a little bit at the sight reading. Um, for those of you who are preparing students for remote exams, you'll know that on a remote exam, it's not possible for the examiner to pass something new to the student. So to get around that, we have been sending the sight reading examples to students 22 hours in advance as a PDF into their student account. And students are permitted to review the example, much like a quick study assignment. So the prepared sight reading is another way to test reading skills. We know that if a student isn't able to read, they're not going to be able to learn to read in 22 hours. Um, on the other hand, because they have had the preparation time, we are expecting that when they do play it, um, the, the uh, quality of the playing will be just a little bit higher than it would be when they're reading it for the first time. The alternative that we have now from level five up is the lead sheet reading. And as you know, lead sheet reading is something that allows students um, to be able to play from fake books, to be able to improvise their own accompaniments and their own arrangements. It's a wonderful form of music making. And so to encourage this, um, we have now given the option that a student on levels five to 10 can either do a traditional reading example or can read a lead sheet, which would look like this. We see the given melody and we see the chord symbols above it in what we call root quality chord symbols. And here is um, the code for understanding those symbols. If um, any of you were traditionally classically trained and didn't learn how to read this way, it's a great opportunity to explore a wonderfully creative form of music making, not just for jazz and pop styles, but even um, for understanding how harmonies work in classical um, melodies, in folk melodies. And so we think this is a great skill for our students to achieve. And that is available now from levels five through 10. On our website, there is a document called the Piano Syllabus Supplement, which has additional examples of these beyond the ones that are included in the piano syllabus. Um, we also um, have to support preparation for these examinations, wonderful musicianship resources, both in hard copy and in both in print and in digital. So the four star sight reading and ear tests is a set of books to support the gradual well-sequenced development of reading skills that has been around for several generations of students and has been a very, very successful way of um, encouraging students to sight read on a daily basis. But we now have the ear training component of this online that has been available for a few years now and brand new just out the door in beta testing this fall is the new RCM online sight reading. So we're just going to take a quick peek at these resources. Um, the four star sight reading and ear test books, um, which are the 2015 edition, because those requirements haven't changed, the 2015 edition is still valid um, and in, in and current for study now. We do have this ear training um, online, and I'm just going to show you a tiny bit of how this works. Olivia is going to be demonstrating the level one here. As you notice from the review exercises, we have rhythm, melody, pitch, chords, or a mixture of all those different exercises. So can you go ahead and tap rhythm? And then here in the instructions, it says, listen to this melody. You will hear one measure of the basic beat and the melody twice. Identify the correct notation for the rhythmic pattern that you heard. And you'll notice that there's a pattern A and a pattern B that she can choose from. So go ahead and push play. And then 
choose, was it pattern A or pattern B? She chooses pattern A and then yay, the star gives us a little happy uh, signal. All right, so that just gives you an idea of how that works. And the new sight reading that's available online is also available on our website for you to check out and to see how the sight reading. Welcome to the early access beta version of the brand new RCM online sight reading platform. RCM Online Sight Reading is designed to help students develop and improve their rhythm reading and sight playing skills while preparing them for the sight reading component of an RCM Certificate Program Piano Practical Exam. RCM Online Sight Reading offers 12 levels of engaging and interactive content in an online environment that can be accessed anytime and anywhere with an internet connection and a piano or keyboard. All right, that just gives you a quick glance. And in the interest of time, I will leave you to explore that further on our website if you'd like to see more about how it works. And this is available now um, for students and teachers. So um, just a few words now about the examination system, how it works, um, and then we're gonna move on to questions. So the examinations are available at all of the levels that we discussed in person. They're available three times a year in selected um, areas of the of of North America where there is where there are exam centers set up. For the past two years, we have offered our examinations online remotely, which makes it possible for students to take their exams when they are ready rather than waiting for the sessions and also to do so from their com comfort of their home um, in any locations across North America. Um, the exam components, we've already looked at how this works, how it's broken down, um, whether the exam is remote or online, it follows the same categories. And marks are assigned for each category with um, levels um, or categories, 60% is required for a pass, 70% is honors, 80 to 89 is first class honors, and 90 to 100 is first class honors with distinction, which is the highest level um, of success that students can work towards. When students complete their exams, they receive detailed commentary from the examiners along with the marks, and then they also receive um, a certificate to acknowledge their achievement. Students who receive the highest marks in their um, area receive certificates of achievement, but also gold medals and certificates of excellence. And there are national um, celebrations of excellence and regional celebrations of excellence in which students can come to a recital and prepare, um, present or perform their pieces um, to acknowledge their accomplishment as well. So um, the remote exam experience um, has been something that's been very successful. Um, we do this on Zoom. Here's um, an example to show you how this, the examiner is set up and the student, um, as they're seeing on, on their um, computer monitor, is set up. Um, and we're just going to take a peek into a quick, um, just a quick look at an actual video of a remote exam. This is a level one remote exam. Hello, how are you? Good. It's Connor, right? Yes. Okay, excellent. You ready to start your exam? Yes. All right, wonderful. So we're gonna start with a really quick sound check. Can you see me and hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. Um, can you just play a really quick scale on your piano just so I can hear the sound? Okay, that's fine. And then, uh, could you play a solid triad loudly? Thank you. And then, could you play it softly? All right, I'm just going to play something on my piano. Make sure you can hear it. Can you hear that okay? Yes. Okay, terrific. So, if you're ready, we'll begin with the technical tests, starting with F major scale in the right hand. Thank you, E natural minor. 
So you can see that the sound is actually quite clear. Um, the examiner did the sound check initially to make sure that uh, he could hear and we could hear the, 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 even the difference in the, the loud chord and the soft chord. So we could see there was a good dynamic range in this Zoom connection. Of course, it depends on you know the devices that students are using and the Wi-Fi connection, but on the whole, we found it very, very successful. Now, our system is currently, I know that many of you are international and you're interested, and we can talk about this more in the question period, but um, our system is currently set up to accept North American credit cards, but we are in the process of um, working out how um, we can make um, exams available even more widely since there's been such an interest shown. Um, the examiners consist of over 350 distinguished teachers, musicians from across North America. They do complete an adjudicator certification program. All of the examiners are teachers and they've all submitted candidates. They're, they're certified teachers. They've submitted candidates for exams over a period of years successfully. Um, this is an example of the sort of things that we're listening for in evaluating students. Um, and of course, there's always an, an element of subjectivity, but there are also some aspects of performance that are, are strictly um, quant quantitative while others are qualitative. And because our examiners, after they complete the program, continue to do professional development, um, we're quite um, proud of the level of consistency that we find in, in the grading from one examiner to another. Um, as we wrap up this part of our time together, um, I wanted to also comment that we do offer several programs to support teacher success and to support teachers who are new to our program becoming familiar with it. We have um, teacher professional development opportunities in our teacher portal. We do offer online piano teacher courses, um, which are to help teachers become familiar with our program and our offerings. And we do offer an RCM teacher certification program. Um, so you can learn more about all of these things by going to our website, rcmusic.com. And of course, if you have any questions about these things, um, I, I'm happy to answer them today or we can follow up afterwards as well. I did want to just point out that this fall we had a wonderful series of webinars introducing the Celebration Series 6th edition. And these webinars are available for viewing on our website. Um, if any of you are interested in learning more about the specific levels and particularly about the new piano syllabus and the sixth edition of Celebration Series. So um, that brings the presentation to a close. And now um, we can go on to any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lopinski. Yeah, that's a very nicely uh, introduction for the RCM program. Yeah, I do have uh, some questions uh, collected uh, from our teacher and the members. First one, teachers wonder if they got the music degree outside of the North America. How can they be a certified teacher of RCM? Thank you. That's a very good question. If you go online to our website and you find that teacher certification section, um, you can go in the search bar and just type in teacher, RCM teacher certification and you'll find it. There is a chart that shows equivalency, equivalent status, equivalent standing. Um, which shows which kind of degrees are credited in which way. So essentially there's two ways to become a certified teacher. One is to come with the credentials that you have and um, depending on what kind of degrees or diplomas you have, um, you will receive credit. Now, all certified teachers must have submitted exam candidates though. So that's the first um, step to have um, a certain number of candidates, and that's all spelled out for the different levels that successfully complete examinations. Because to be an RCM certified teacher, of course, you need to have had some experience submitting um, students. So the other way is um, to go through our piano teacher courses because completion of the piano teacher courses and some people even people who have master's degrees and doctorates choose to do that as a way of just refreshing their information and becoming familiar with the RCM um, 
expectations for exams. So those are the two ways, e through equivalent standing or through completion of the piano courses. And with both methods, um, you do need to have submitted some, some exam candidates. Okay, and uh, another question um, for those teachers, if they choose to do the online piano course, do they need to take the level eight theory, level nine harmony and history, those like pre-request course to be that, certified? That's a good, another, another good question. Again, um, depending on what their, their background is, we assess each one on a case by case basis and grant the equivalent standing. Oh. So obviously somebody who has you know a a, a a dma or a master's degree or even a, a bachelor degree with a music um in music with theory courses that would be credited in lieu of having the rcm um, certification the rcm levels <clears throat> so we do <clears throat> we do give credit for music study that has been done elsewhere in terms of the certification mm -hmm, i see and uh, if the student took the ABRS, ABRSM before, and how can they, it, can they do the RCM right away after they don't have to start it from the very beginning, right? So they can just uh, choose a certain level of the RCM to take the exam from the ABRSM. Am I absolutely right? that is absolutely correct. Um, the only place where we have a prerequisite um, to maximize the flexibility for everyone, the place where we do have a prerequisite is if somebody wants to do an ARCT, um, our associate diploma, they need to have completed their level 10 with us. Mm -hmm. But at previous levels, um, teachers can have a look at the repertoire that was played on the ABRSM or any other exam and see how that fits in with ours and bring their students in at any point. I do believe there is a chart available that shows how the, the levels line up. And um, offhand, I think the level five of ABRSM is similar to seven or eight of, of, of uh, the RCM because we have a larger number of levels. Mm -hmm. But we do have that information available to help you um, decide how to transition. But the best way is really to see how the repertoire aligns for a given yeah, level. I see. Uh, could you talk about the LRCM certificate? What's the purpose of that certificate? And if someone got that, what's the benefit? Because most of us are familiar with uh, the ARCT. How about the LRCM? That's a great question. So um, that was created a little um, a little later than the ARCT, actually, just in the last 20 years, because of the fact that more and more students, it seems, are um, completing their ARCT diplomas when they're still in high school, they still want to continue studying. So it was to provide an opportunity for students who have completed their ARCT to have another goal to work towards. And um, originally we had this only for piano. We've recently in our new violin syllabus included it for violin as well. So it's just an opportunity for somebody who has their ARCT because the ARCT is a prerequisite to continue their study to work towards a goal where they will receive another diploma and um, additional feedback and have another another opportunity to continue studying with a goal. Um, that's the purpose of it. And in terms of um, the credential, I think it 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 is just you know we we sometimes have have students who come with. Um, both ABRSM and RCM certification in this world where um, students and, and young professionals are trying to differentiate themselves in many ways. It's another, it's another credential to add um, to somebody's portfolio and another opportunity really just, just to continue studying in depth and to learn more um, great music and prepare for another performance. Mm, that's great. And could you talk about, as we know, like RCM exam definitely can equivalent to the high school credit. Uh, could you talk about how to access that process? Yes, and that's um, difficult to discuss in detail because it is so variable from province to province in Canada. Um, so I think the best thing to do is to go onto the website and search high school credits. And there is a chart on the website that shows 
what the credits are in each province. Oh. Now we um, have been working with the ministries of education and provincial um, authorities in, in over the years to try to find more uniformity. But right now there's quite a range in Canada. There are some provinces in which there are numerous credits and some provinces in which there are only two. Some provinces in which there are high school credits for, for, level, for grade nine, 10, 11 and 12 and and others where it's only you know one for level 9 10 11 and one for one advanced for level 12 there's a huge range um mm. so you really have to look up in your own province there's all there's also been an interest in this in the united states and there were some have been some teachers who have found ways in their um local boards of education to receive credits for RCM as well, but that is not as firmly established. That's something new. And we had a group at one point of teachers who were meeting to share their experience and, 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 uh, you know, discover how best to move this forward. So it really varies from place to place. So check our website. And uh, if you're interested in promoting this in your area, um, the best thing to do, I think, is to join with other teachers who are interested and see what can be done in a given area. There's some discussion in our Facebook groups on this sometimes where teachers come together and share their information of what they've been able to do locally. Because the high school credits are granted locally, we work with the ministries of education as much as we can, but it really usually happens at the local level. I see. Because I'm in BC. Uh, in BC Education Board, the level 10 can replace uh, aid credit credit. So like starting from a grade 10 to grade 12, so all high school level. So it's in total eight credit for the level 10. Yes, it's amazing in BC. That's very strong there. And, you know, the other thing that's different is in some provinces, um, the requirement is that if you have level seven piano, you must have level seven theory. In other provinces, they say, if you have level seven piano and level eight theory, we'll take it. So really the best advice I can give is check to see what the requirements are in your local area. I see. And if the student outside of the US and Canada, um, do they have any opportunity to take part in the program? That's an, another really good question. So um, as I mentioned before, there's been increasing interest recently in our exams internationally. And we know of some situations where students have been able to take exams. Emma, I think you were sharing some experience on that. Um, currently, our system will only accept North American credit cards with North American addresses for um, the registration. Yeah, However, okay. yeah. Yeah, but my student, like I have some students remotely teach, uh, they are located in China and due to the pandemic, they are not able to travel outside. So I register the exam for them and they definitely can uh, log into the system and take the exam online. Right. So that's a great workaround um, for a teacher to do that. And from our end, we are, in fact, working on trying to see if we can make arrangements, both be able to be able to ship our books more widely. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's another like request from our members. They ask where they can buy the our books. <laughs> yes. And currently, um, you know, the global economy being what it is, and there are taxation laws in different countries. Um, we have to approach this country by country. So if you live, and we are working on unlocking additional countries, but we have to uh, look at tax issues and shipping fees. So I think on a case by case basis, um, if you live in a place where you are unable to um, receive our books, please just let us know that you're interested and we will keep working to try to find ways um, to make the books available. Currently, that is a work in progress, as is um, the availability of the exams for, for registration more widely. Mm, I see. And it's a good news for the U.S. exam centers and the U.S. Education Board accept RCM as a credit. So now how many exam centers in the U.S.? 
Oh my goodness, I don't have that information on hand right now um, because in fact, um, during the pandemic, we were um, having to, you know, obviously do all our exams online. And so now we've been gradually opening up centers. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the, what the total number is right now. I know there are some centers that opened um, in the spring and others that we're easing into. Um, because, of course, in order to be able to do an in-person exam, we have to have a certain minimum number of students to make it worthwhile for an examiner to be there. So you can see the complete list of the centers that are available on, on the website. When you come onto our website, um, when you find the examinations section, there are two paths you can take US and Canada. So depending on what you're interested in um, for exam centers, you can see the current lists and the registration information um, listed separately for each country. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Uh, one more last question. So from the popular list selection, uh, I noticed uh, the piece is only for level one to level nine, right? And how about the level 10? In the new um, popular selections list that just came out, there is actually an expansion to level 10. Oh, okay. That's, that's new. That's the, the, the recently released one. So uh, you can look forward to that um, in the future. I see. Okay, I, well, that's good. I know we're almost out of time. I just see a question here. Um, yeah, yeah. In the chat, I'd like to I answer that. the last question about the chord symbols. That's a really good detailed question about the lead sheet reading. So for level five and six, which is where the skill is first introduced, if a candidate plays the chord in solid form without any interesting figuration or elaboration, um, that is fine. Um, at level seven and eight, the syllabus states that um, creative accompaniment figures are encouraged. And at level nine and 10, creative accompaniment figures are expected. So there's a gradual progression. Now, if you have a level five student who's able to, you know, get a sense of the character of the music and play a waltz accompaniment or a broken chord accompaniment, um, that's great, but that's um, more than expected. At level five and six, if they play solid form, root position, that's perfect. Um, the inversions come in when the slash notation is introduced. So once the slash notation that indicates an inversion comes in, students must follow that. D that doesn't come in until a little later. And if you have students in level nine and 10, you should certainly be expecting that they do more than play solid, that they play it with the appropriate um, appropriate figuration that would best support the style and character of the melody. Um, and I will make a PDF available, Emma. I can share the PowerPoint in a PDF form afterwards. Sure. Um, that question mm -hmm. as Thank well. You. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh -huh. and, and it's been a great pleasure um, to, to speak with you and to share information with your group. Um, please explore our website. And if you have any questions, you can um, write to us through Emma or write to us through our teacher services accounts. And we look forward to making our, our exams and our programs more widely available um, in the years to come. And for those of you who um, are in North America, please do encourage your students to participate because it's a wonderful way to ensure well-rounded musical training and also to set goals to maximize each student's progress. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Janet Lopsky. You know, you're always my idol. So like, I really admire your achievement because you're like a multifaceted career as a pianist, teacher, adjudicator, lecturer, and author. So that's amazing. And at the same time, and you are the founder and artist director of the Canadian Chopin Society. That's really inspired us like, to, for the young generation, always do something for our community, for the young generation to support them. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much, Emma. Thank you very much and, and best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. If you have questions, you can email me or email to IPPA support and we will group all the questions and send back to the RCM and you will receive your answer. Thank you. Bye Thank you. Now. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Bye for now.